Hello, everyone. This is Bradley. So today, this is another voice recording of November 2021, in which we're going to do prompt 10 white. So my thinking is to do a dandelion flying animation. So let's start. Because uh, this is November, um, it's everything is supposed to be kind of node as much as possible. So this is we have to do the kind of modeling even with kind of stuff so i try to be as fast as possible but of course i don't think it's anywhere productive uh if you start to do the kind of modeling maybe there will be a time points uh, on the timeline or a timestamp on the timeline to suggest uh, where you sh can start to take a look with the real stuff but here i need to take a uv sphere a joint geometry Basically, I need a single unit uh, of my stuff. Let's take a transform, decrease the radius, and take the scales a little bit up. And for curve linear, let's use a bevel curve so that I can actually see it. Okay. Uh, I think this is it, and I need another UV sphere. And this UV sphere should uh, go at the same height as my curve linear. Okay. Here I'm also going to decrease this count of UV sphere because it's not necessary at all. If I'm having this, let's move that up to one, take the scale, uh, something like that, 0 .0 0 0.05, and I need to create another kind of uh, this kind of flowery parts of uh, the dandelion. Actually, I'm doing a single flying unit in this case. So what I'm going to do is to take a circle, curve circle, and take a another curve linear. Let's just shift the D point instance. Uh, take the curve two points, curve into space. This time I'm using the X. And we can actually see what has been created. Here, let's take a align with the two vector and using the normal so that everything is facing outside of my curve. Take this curve to be 0 0.01. And it looks like this right now. Uh, actually, I'm using the X. Yes, now it's actually fine. Here, let's deform this uh, flowery part. And this is uh, the common method I'm using in this case. I think I'm is the realized instance and take the set of position. There are plenty of ways to do, but I think this is probably the best. Take a curve parameter and then combine XYZ. You probably have seen me doing this for many times already in this November because I work with curve a lot a float curve so that we can change how this value has been gone curve parameter is basically a value from 0 to 1 uh, for each spline that's why to manipulate this height we're going to use the mass multiply and here we can take a randomness presets plug the values into values and we can control the average to control the height there is one thing you realize is the jaggedness of this entire whole thing the reason it happens is because the index is functioning on each vertices. That's why each vertice is, is having a different value and that's causing a problem. Uh, what we can do here is to capture attributes for every spot to take an index. Uh, we can decide the integral, but it's very minimally affecting our results since the index is already integral. Let's plug this new attribute into custom ID and we can see except the first point which is still very jaggy this is because uh, of the mechanism how i build this node so if you every time you're using custom id in this case you probably want a plus one okay uh, we can change all these kind of settings for example we can deal with all this kind of count to make it smoother but these are not very necessary in my opinion i would concern more about the counts for this kind of circle, so I decide how many uh, parts I have. But uh, this is kind of it. 
So we can actually set all this kind of material. Uh, but it does not set material for a curve, so we need to bevel the curve. Take uh, the radius at 0 0.01. So I have these parts. So finally, we can join everything. So let's take this and finally replace it. We probably need a transform as well. Transform one. So here, what I can do is take another geometry, join geometry, and plug our values into it. So it transformed one. So we can manage or change all this kind of tree later, but it, you get all this kind of mesh done. So we can start to move on to the next step. Although I think this is a pretty kind of simple, but so we do have a kind of a moderate large node tree that I do not want to continue working on this. So I'm going to make this as a group node. So let's name that as a flying unit. Uh, let's take a geometry to instance so that we can instance later in other node tree. Um, so here let's take a so there I want to expose some values so that we can actually control. So for example this resolution uh, these values and we also need to take the size of from this randomness. Okay. Uh, so that we can control this kind of value. We can also control these values within this uh, single thing. So let's take this flying unit as well. Now we can hide this object, but uh, anyway, let's create a new object with a new geometry node trees. Uh, let's take a sphere, UV sphere, and take a flying unit. Take a distribute points or maybe directly point the instance. That is also an option. So if we instance this flying unit, and we just directly get all the sound points. So we can decrease the amount, maybe uh, 8 to 8, decrease the size. I'm also going to align root to vector. Hit a normal. And to rotation. So now I have this kind of dandelion, whatever stuff. Uh, it looks kind of very big, so we can also take the randomness. to control the scale while giving randomness. I'm going to hide this flying unit because I don't want to see it ever again. <laughs> uh, let's take a join geometry. So that we see both of them. So basically this is our dendrium. I, I think this is kind of fine. Uh, we can tweak all these kind of settings later. So I do not want to really touch this. Uh, another thing is we need a stem for this kind of dandelion, a single dandelion. So um, how should I do? Let's take another curve linear. This is re this time is really just a straight line. So let's take a negative one values count as two without offset um, bevel curve. And if we plot get in. Then we have n. It should go to yeah. It should go on z, and then negative one. Decrease radius. So now we have this kind of single part of dendelia. Uh, we can increase the count if we were going to do the kind of deformation while they are flying away. But that's kind of another story. We can also change all these kind of segments. It's also very possible that we just distribute the points. Um, Whichever you use will be fine because I think it will be better if we're using Poisson disk. But that's our, these are all another story. Okay, so what do we do later is to really instance this whole group while keeping the ability to make them flying away. Here, instead of instance the entire dandelion unit as a whole, I'm going to break everything apart in this joint, uh, joint geometry. So firstly, let's do create a grid and make it a 10 10 because I think we created this dendelion too large. Let's uh, point distributes 
uh, and use the Poisson disk. Actually, when we use the Poisson disk, the amount becomes basically pointless because it's very difficult to keep these two criteria at the same time. Once we have all the sum of points, let's point instance also here. So we have all this kind of sphere, and then we use this sphere, a group of sphere to replace a single sphere instance. So we should be able to see it turns off Dendelia. Okay, and then we can join geometry in this case. Uh, another thing is we have this stem. So this stem also needs instancing. So let's take another point instance, take the points. So now we have stamps, then they are all in the same place. I think I'm not going I'm going to kill this UV sphere, but use this linkage instead. So we have all this kind of single unit being made. Uh, it's kind of too large in this case. So let's take the, the scale or you can use the randomness again. So for this randomness, let's plug that in. We can decrease the value. And I I need to use the same value as the scale for later. Something like that. We do realize all these kind of different heights of them because the origin actually stands in the sphere instead of the button. But I think I'm not going to fix it here because it's kind of a long process. I'm going directly for the animation. Also, let's decrease the count actually, so that I only have several units to play around our dendelia. Now, another thing is I would like to rotate them differently. So let's just take a combine XYZ. So up to now, you actually realize many times uh, it's not a very difficult stuff to play around. It's just uh, it. It still costs a lot of nodes because you need to repeatedly you doing various stuff. Let's take a another randomness. This time I'm going to delete this relative and take a pi times two to the place. Okay. Also change the seeds every time when you are working. So now we have this dendelia and I'm going to make all this kind of instance to fly away based on the fourth. Uh, our dandelion actually sits in this uh, instance some points. So we translate, we can translate instance and rotate the instance uh, in this place. So here to translate that, basically I'm going to move that from some place right upper corner, something like that. So we take a combine XYZ to define the translation that we're looking for. Uh, here we notice that if I try on this local space, everything is really local space based on their rotation. So I do not want them, so I just move them up and forward, uh, right up. So to achieve this kind of results, how am I supposed to do? You can keep doing this randomness stuff. I think it's not really necessarily wrong, but I think what's also possible is to take a noise 3D and take a vector mass. So you can just uh, turn on this color to the translation. And if you turn off this mid level and increase the skill that they just fly in that direction. Here you can use a multiply to decrease certain direction. For example, decrease the amplitude from y axis. Then you get this kind of result. So this is just a translation. And uh, if we use a mix vector, take the two vector, and by mixing these kind of values then we are having this transition. So we can use a directional fault to trigger this transition uh, of the factor. So 
So here let's take an empty as a trigger. And we can see how it actually has been going with our stuff. Here I realize an issue that uh, we are translating this uh, dandelion file unit as a whole, uh, which shouldn't really happen because we're instancing a single file unit like this. So something's wrong. Um, looking at this instance, we can see that the instances only has four. So that's why they're a whole thing, but we're instancing a single file unit. So I think that the reason stems in the fact that we didn't realize the instance. So we definitely can read all these kind of points through, but we still have to realize the instance. Uh, so now uh, all these kind of points are more kind of separated apart and flowing. Uh, we can increase the scale of our uh, directional fold so that it's more kind of smooth for them to move. So the scale really matters in this case. So the larger the better. It's also, it's also kind of like a keyframes, larger the our fourth, uh, more longer interval between keyframes. Okay, here we can also take a rotation in uh, ro rotate instances, and this time I think you can still use noise, but I am going to take another randomness, take a different seeds. Disable relative to average, take the vector into rotations. Actually, I need another new mixed factor and take the same directional fourth. And let's take this as a pi. So now I do not only make them translate but also make them rotate. And this is directional fold, so it's based on the axis that we're working. So we can actually take this x, y, z, and this is how it flies. We can also add some noise to this uh, directional fold. So take a vector noise. So it might not be very obvious in this particular case, but it will work in a larger scale if we increase the counts within this stuff. So we have this dandelion, dandelion, dandelion flying. Okay. So something like that. So the rest is basically tweaking about all these kind of animations and the fixing this elevation stuff. But uh, I think generally we finished this animation already. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.